Hi, hello everybody, this is Heather, and I guess we're here to talk about Delubrum Regine Savage, and my thoughts on it, and and, and thoughts on rating in general. Um, I, I don't have a script, so this, this will be maybe a bit of a ramble, but I think I'll do okay. I used to, I mean, I was a journalist and content creator for a living before I gave up that life, so I, I can talk pretty extemporaneously. Um, I guess we should just explain what Delubrum Regine is. Delubrum Regine, Savage version, um, which for the record, I wish it wasn't called Savage. I wish it was called Type Zero or something that was a little less uh, kind of shitty, but that's a small complaint. Um, Delubrum Regine Savage is a 48 man dungeon in Final Fantasy XIV, which I believe contains five bosses and four mini bosses. I might be getting that number incorrect. What it is, is a, a series of unfortunate events where you need to defeat all of the bosses and get to the end, like you would in any sort of big raid content. The catch here is that players have access to things that aren't just the uh, skills that their classes have. They have access to things called lost actions. In particular, the ones that matter are things like Lost Arise, which is a resurrection skill. Because in here, when you die, you're not always guaranteed the chance to be revived. Lost Arise has a chance of missing, so when people are trying to revive you in a fight, it might miss, you might stay down. The only things that can revive you are Lost Arise, another ability called Lost Sacrifice, and then Limit Breaks from your healer, LB3 specifically, three Limit Break bars for those of you who don't play the game, um, which will revive everybody in your party. Um, this is footage from my first clear of of this content. I unfortunately, I'm doing, I'm talking over it because I lost all of my sound. Um, we'll talk about a lot of things at first. Here's a mechanic that we call Hard Chess. I want to explain it just to give a sense of what mechanics are like in this encounter. In Hard Chess, I need to move a certain amount of distances away from that safe spot. And that distance is based on the total of the two debuffs I have right next to me on that left-hand side. In this case, it's five. And then I have to travel back using that amount of spaces. So one, two, three. I'm also trying to move into spaces where these robots will not blast me with lasers. This is a safe spot. I have two, two steps to get back to the safe spot. So then one, two. That is actually a pretty, pretty solid and textbook version of what we call hard chess. Um, these are not the most mechanically difficult encounters. They just all tend to have one or two mechanics that can be hard to grasp until you practice them a little. I wouldn't say that these are savage level boss fights. They're closer to extreme level content for those of you who might be familiar. The difference is that you have to do like six of them, right? And also, you know, anytime you mess up, you get a stack of something called twice come ruin, or in some cases, uh, thrice come ruin, which means that if you, in this fight at least, if I get hit by two AoEs that are avoidable, I will get doom and die instantly. You're going to see that happen to me later on. Um, it's just a way of punishing people for not being mechanically sound, which for the most part, I think I'm a mechanically sound player, even if I am not the most a high damaging player. I'm still learning my rotations. People from uh, the raid were helping me a lot uh, in terms of improving my abilities as a monk because I started this game as a healer and through sheer luck and party finder shenanigans, I ended up doing endgame content with Memoria Misera, which I think was post patch in Shadowbringers in like 5.3 or something. So I'm not somebody who's been, who's like been doing endgame content long. Um, this is where I'm going to make some mistakes. Um, I need to point this towards the robot that's shooting a gun and I miss. And so instead I take a stack there and it's going to affect me in the next uh, chess phase. Um, this entire process was done with a group, by the way, called the Furious 48, which was a mixture of people who I knew from uh, doing like extreme trials and like that sort of thing, and then their own friends and people we drew in. And by this point of our process, we had gotten to, this is the final fight. Um, 
a fair amount of times. And we had had at least two instances where we wiped at 1%. We had an instance where we wiped at 0.5%. And I know for a lot of people that was really discouraging, even though I think each time we were doing these fights, we were improving and understanding the mechanics a little better. And we had uh, more trust in the people who were doing callouts and just flat out more skill from those folks and more patience. And we had uh, certain lessons that were being learned. Our damage could have been higher because in, in this case, we're not gonna even see in rage. We're gonna bypass that entirely. So clearly our damage could have been higher, but in those other encounters, our mitigation could have been maybe higher because since this clear, I've done another clear where we got to enrage, the soft enrage anyway, where the boss is doing tons of damage and we had people who were mitigating and helping us heal through it and we got that clear anyway, even though we were quote unquote in an enrage phase. This is my second run at hard chess. I move the right amount of spaces and then the issue is going to be I accidentally choose the wrong path on the return. My strategy for this is always just to move a certain set amount of spaces and then worry about my path on the return. A lot of people probably disagree with that and they'll go, oh, Heather, that's not, uh, why are you doing it this way when we have these hardcore strategies? Sometimes when you do content, you just have to do what works for you. But because I ate that stack earlier when I didn't turn to defend myself against the boss with the gun, I take a hit of that ruined stack there and die. I probably would have been, if my re-raiser didn't take so long there because I got automatically revived, I probably would have had enough time to make it back to the safe spot, but I don't. Sorry, it's just bad news. I am not the highest tier player. I'm gonna make mistakes. As long as I'm alive for most of the fight and contributing in a way that feels good, then that's fine by me. Also, we had LB3 at that point. So in terms of quote unquote dying at the best time, that was probably the best time because I was able to get up really quick. I'm sure if you're looking at my rotations, there are issues. I'm probably not keeping up Twin Snakes as much as I can. I'm probably not clicking on my lost actions enough. I know there was a moment where my buffs got misaligned. Here, I'm actually going to hesitate a little bit and move and get clipped here again and take another stack, which is a mistake, but I should survive until the end of the rest of the fight. Um, why do I show this off if I don't have like the cool, exciting reaction of us completing the boss for the first time with all the, you know, original sound recording? And, and why do I show it off with, you know, footage of me making mistakes? And the answer is because it's okay to make mistakes. Um, you know, I felt bad about it, but the important thing for me was that I was never performing so terribly that I was letting my team down. Yeah, this poll has a lot of embarrassing things in it. The fact that I basically forget Fist of Fire for 10% of the fight, which is embarrassing, and I will never let myself live down. The fact that my buffs get a little misaligned. The fact that I could have easily avoided dying during that second chest if I had just either moved a little smarter or maybe done the previous mechanic before that better. Um, these are all things you see in hindsight, but the important thing is that this process was one where I was growing, where I was with people who were high tier players or also just with people who were of the same skill level as me, and we were all really invested in learning and improving. I would show people my opening rotations and they would tell me where I was incorrect. And instead of feeling, you know, angry because somebody was saying, no, you're doing it wrong. What the hell are you doing? I said, well, teach me and show me, give me the resources, um, even though I'm in the balance or whatever. And the result is that I became a better player. And through all of our hard work, we were able to clear, especially this, this clear here where we were just really hungry for it and knocked it out of the park. Um, do I think that I will get really into raiding after this? My answer is probably no. I am a social player. I'm a role player. I like writing stories. I like making stories. Um, some of the best people I met, one of my exes, for instance, I met because I was role playing in this game. Um, I am just that sort of person. Uh, but raiding is fun and it has pushed me to improve 
um, just fundamentally as a player, and also just forced me to really reassess, you know, how I think about um, playing high tier content in games, right? I think when we had our close calls and our 1% wipes and our 0.5% wipes, people felt really discouraged. And I understand that, I do. Um, and I'm not saying this to just say it, but there was a part of me that just didn't worry, right? It, because it's a game, right? And, and I understand that this is a huge time investment. Each run of Delubrum Regine takes like an hour, an hour and a half. And that's a lot of time to ask from people. And I think a lot of us wanted our clears earlier. We didn't want to be doing this. I think we did it for more than a month. And, you know, that sucks, but also we got it done. And I, take it from me, I am deeply depressed right now. I will be open up, I, I'll be honest about that. So like my mind is in a terrible place. So trust me when I tell you that at least with games, you can get it done. It, like just put in the time, put in the time to learn for yourself, for, you know, for the joy of becoming a better player yourself, but also because there's joy in supporting your team. And I wasn't the most, you know, hardcore player here. I wasn't top of the damage um, charts. I wasn't the one who was saving the day, but I was contributing and I was working hard so that I could do well for my teammates. And the result was that I spent time with a bunch of very good people. I got to have an experience I didn't know that I would have really had enjoyed, you know, looking back at where I was maybe even a year ago playing this game. And I, I guess my advice to anybody who's looking at this and going, well, I'm not sure if I can do this. The answer is, of, of, of course you can, especially if you're just doing trials or maybe early savage stuff. When everybody is new to content, just join Party Finder and try it because that way you will be new too and you'll make mistakes and they'll make, make mistakes and you'll learn together and you'll grow and you'll just have fun. And it doesn't have to be the thing you do, but it can be a thing you do. I'm not going to be a raider. I'm going to try doing more raids, but you know, that's not who I am. But still, had a lot of fun doing this. Really good times. And I'm glad that we finally got our clears and are doing re-clears.